<laughs> Elijah said my friends are back because he's been trying to motivate himself to make a TikTok for two days. <laughs> he can't do it. He can't do it. Anyways, Grandma really wants me to tell her the negative thing. Now, I still have a terrible haircut, so you yeah. can always make fun of me for that. But someone came on the live. Yeah. And I shouldn't tell you this because it's negative. It's, you know. It's only Mother's Day. But they day. came There's on nothing. a... It's a Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Grandma. Ow, you're pushing but me down. But someone said on my live, when I was doing a live whatnot, they said, hey, it's this guy. Where's the little leprechaun that follows him around his <laughs> <laughs> we are Irish, though. So. We are Irish, and that so, was yeah. that was. And not we find nice. treasure. And we do. We have We're lots both of small, yeah. wearing yeah. So we are kind of leprechauns, but yeah. I'm the leprechaun. Well, I would like to know who said that, and um, well, I banned him. I banned him. You banned him. He got the ban okay. hammer. Yeah, yeah that was so. very rude yeah. because um. So totally if he's watching, right. tell him Grandma's not happy with that comment. I'm not happy with that comment. If you have nothing to say. Nothing not nice say, to say. Don't, don't say, say anything yeah, at all. No, that's the golden rule, right? right? I don't it know is the golden rule. Why do you have to insult rule. innocent people? Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Oh, thank you. Happy tell Sunday. tell Grandma Happy Mother's Day in the comments. <laughs> hey, guys. How's it going? Dave the NC Flipper, maybe, here. And uh, I figured I should have probably been recording all day yesterday as I was just randomly changing everything and being some sort of a weirdo. But I forgot to record. So I'm recording now the post- Dave randomly deciding to change his YouTube channel name. Yeah, that's what's happening. So <laughs> if you didn't catch it, I put a video over on my NC Picker channel yesterday about how I'm going to be changing the names of my channels. And I don't know, it, it's something I've wanted to do. I've talked about it on this channel. You guys have even given me suggestions for names and stuff in the comments in the past. It has now been 14 months that I've been living in Florida and I finally decided it was time to go ahead and do it. And really the thing that initiated it and made it happen for real, like I, I talked about on my NC Picker video, I got a wagon back there, is uh, from the flea market, is when Blue Ridge Mama, Kevin's wife, came up with this name ADH Dave, which I really liked and it, fe it felt like it fit me so well because as you guys know, I have pretty bad ADHD or good ADHD, whatever you want to call it. But I have ADHD. My name is Dave. I thought it was a cool play on words. I thought it was easy to remember, uh, which is important with a channel name. So I was like, this is so good, I have to act on it. And so I just like got stuck in like, okay, this has got to be the name. Now I need to make a logo and see if it actually works. And I went off on this whole tangent to completely rechange my YouTube channel or to change my YouTube channels. And like I said, I settled on ADH Dave. Let me shut my window, it's loud. I'm going to add like a modifier at the end, ADH Dave buys on my picker channel, sells on here on my flipper channel. So this channel will soon be named ADH Dave sells, okay? And if you see me, you don't need to call me ADH Dave, just call me Dave, that's my name, it's Dave. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited about it, but yesterday was like a whirlwind of getting that all ready. It was a really short video, it didn't take long to film. The issue though, is that I accidentally uploaded the wrong video. So I made this thumbnail. I was like, I like this thumbnail because I'm throwing my logo in the trash can and it's very representative, right? And it's the end of NC Picker is what I titled it, which is like clickbait, but not really. It literally is the end of NC Picker. I don't live in North Carolina anymore. It doesn't make sense to keep that name long-term. It limits my audience to North Carolina. So anyways, I decided I want to do it. So I make this nice thumbnail. I uploaded the wrong video. Like three minutes of just random footage of me sitting at my desk had nothing to do with anything. And it had that really cool, you know, me throwing the logo in the trash can and the title and of NC Picker and everyone was so confused. And I didn't realize it for like an hour, right? So like people were like, what's going on? Did Dave get fired? Like what's happening? You know, what does this video mean? <laughs> Is Dave okay? <laughs> And literally it was just, I uploaded another similar video that was three minutes, but it was of me just sitting at my desk not doing anything. So it was super confusing to everyone. And I was actually pretty embarrassing if I have to be honest. This is part of ADHD though. Like this all just proves the point that the channel name fits perfectly. I'm always rushing around and doing so many things at once that I make really obvious mistakes like that. So I thought that was pretty funny. But yeah, so the channel name is changing Make sure you subscribe so you don't lose me. I don't think you'll lose me. I think you can still find me by searching NC Flipper for a while. But at some point, you'll have to search ADH Dave 
to find this channel if you're not subscribed. Otherwise, if you're subscribed and turn on notifications, it'll just tell you when I upload. But that means I have to change like my whatnot. I have to change my affiliate stuff. I have to change my stickers. I got to get new hats or shirts or something. The NC Piggy will still stand because he is eternal and he does not actually say NC Picker anywhere on him. And we, we don't need to call him NC Piggy. We call him the Death Pile Support Pig most of the time anyways. So the Death Pile Support Pig will live on. You know what's so funny? And this is again my psychosis here. I just drove to the post office, <laughs> okay, to drop off my packages. Do you know what I didn't do? I didn't put the packages in the car. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, this happens a lot. Like, I'm not even kidding, guys. Like, this is the life I live. And people tell me to slow down, but I'm incapable of slowing down. So instead, I just screw up slow down screw up it's the same thing right so i guess i'm gonna go back to my house and pick up the boxes the real the real reason i needed to come here beyond the dropping off packages well i didn't set up a pickup was that i need to pick up a few boxes that are too big for my po box so uh big ones like the return of the playstation the return of the xbox those both came back and i really want to test the ps3 because the uh, eBay is about to refund the customer. If you don't refund quick enough, they'll refund for you, even if you don't want them to, and they'll do a full refund. So I need to get that PS3, make sure it's the same serial number before eBay goes ahead and does the refund. Cause I might want to do like a 50% refund, which I'm in, you know, I can do, all right? They said it worked, they gave me feedback and now all of a sudden it doesn't work. So if it's the wrong PS3, then I don't want to give them a full refund, basically is what I'm saying. So I need to get it. but. Again, half of the point was bringing packages and I didn't put them in the car. And that's because I wanted to record this little bit, giving you guys an update about my channel. But I don't know. So yeah, what do you guys think of the new name? You know, some people hate it, some people love it. I'd say overall the comments are positive, um, except the one that said greedy picker. <laughs> Someone said I should be greedy picker. That was nice of them. Although I don't know, the people who don't record at yard sales generally seem to be more uh, vicious than me when it comes to pricing. I see them... Uh, negotiating much harder than I negotiate. But yeah, so I was trying to get all this done early, early, and you know, just, I can't believe I forgot the packages. But yeah, I need to order some new stickers, some uh, ADH Dave stickers, that'll be cool. I don't know if I'll do shirts. I still have NC Picker shirts. All your NC Picker shirts and stickers, guys, are now gonna be uh, rare, hard to find. Uh, rare HTF, that means hard, hard to find, uh, vintage, that's your NC Picker stuff. I still have some left, so if you want to get some of the last uh, product I have, check out ncflipper.com, and you can grab those as well. I think, man, I, I should go check my quantities before I publish this, because I'm almost out of those shirts. I think I have a few 5X, a few 4X, a few 3X, um, but I'm out of smalls, out of mediums, maybe even out of larges, and I probably have a few XL and double X. So I think I just have XL and larger on the store and it's all like less than 10 pieces. So they'll be gone pretty soon. I'll probably do a clearance sale, right? NC Picker clearance sale. That's what I'll do. I'll do a discount on them just to get rid of them because you know, we're not gonna be NC Picker very much longer. So it'll be like the last, last chance sale on those shirts. I don't know, I'll do like, I, I don't know. I don't wanna lose money on them, but I'll, I'll discount them to some level. Okay, let me get the packages this time. Try this whole project again. Uh, I'll let Tina laugh at me because she will laugh at me for screwing this up. But yeah, this is just a Dave thing. She says it's cute, whatever. I say it's <laughs> inconvenient when I do stuff like this, but whatever. Thank you guys. I'll be back in a little bit to pull my eBay orders because I have some. Hey guys, Dave here. Uh, yes, yeah, so we already talked this morning actually, didn't we? When I was going to the post office and totally forgot to bring packages. Well, I went back to the post offices, offices, just one office, brought the packages and dropped them off and all is well that ends well. I picked up my packages and I need to go through them. I think a lot of it's just me buying stuff on whatnot when I shouldn't be, but we do have these returns in here and I'm gonna test that PS3, make sure the serial number matches, but I'm not sure which box it's in. I have, I have this box and it's really heavy and I'm hoping that they didn't put the console back in such a tiny box because it probably wouldn't have shipped very well. 
Especially when I know I shipped it in a nice safe box with tons of wrapping and stuff like that. Kind of inconsiderate for the uh, buyer to put it in, in a box like this. But, you know, that's just one man's opinion. Yeah, some others. Maybe it's not that, though. Maybe it's not the return. It might not be. It says return service. It is. It's the, well, it's the Xbox. Look at that. I mean, geez. The box was, like, bulging on both sides. If it wasn't broken, it probably is now. I thought of something when I was driving back from the post office. I actually don't know how I'm going to test this because I had one power supply and I included included that power supply in the other Xbox that I sold. Is it a common supply? Oh, it looks... I don't know. I'll need to look it up and see if it's external or internal. I mean, it's a pretty common D-plug, but I don't need to know if I need like a separate thing. Anyways, we'll test it and see. You know, now that I think about it, that might have been the problem with the whole entire thing. Uh, he didn't have the power supply because it wasn't included. Maybe he tried to use just a standard D-plug instead of an actual Xbox power supply. Let me look this up. No, it looks like it's just a standard cord. It's just a standard... It's not a D though, it's a figure eight. That's right. So you got like the D style and then the figure eight. This is a figure eight. He said it didn't power on at all. Let's test it right now and see if I'm going crazy. I tested this before I shipped it and it worked fine. So let me set up my TV here. We need to test the PS3 too. Okay, so I can't actually fully test the Xbox because I don't have the AV cable. Like I said, I included all that with the one that sold. Because I sold them both, right? Yeah, I did. But he said this wouldn't even power on. So let's just plug it in and see if we hear them power up noises and if the disc tray opens. Also, he didn't really protect it when he shipped it. So let's see what happens here. Moment of truth. Pressing the button. Nothing happens. Hmm. Interesting. So I guess my question is, could I file a USPS claim? Did I take a picture of the bottom? Hold on. Let me check something. Yeah, I did. Well, it looks like the same console on this one. I'm not sure why it was powering on when I tested it. I shipped it super safe. He certainly didn't worry about shipping it safe back to me. I don't know. Let's check the PS3 if we can find it. So that one's a more depressing refund, 250 bucks, so. All right, so this might be it. This uh, box has seen better days for sure. But let's see if this is the PS3 that he said no longer works. And when we sent it at work, he even admitted that it worked for the first hour. So, I mean, I'm just getting unlucky with consoles, I guess. Open it up. Yeah, this is it. So first and foremost, let's see what the uh, serial number is. Make sure it matches. Isn't this fun dealing with returns, guys? This is the exciting part of reselling that most resellers don't show you. Just dealing with returns. But yeah, the question is like, this thing worked perfectly when I sent it. He gets it, he uses it for a few hours and then it breaks. So I'm tempted to do a restocking fee since I sent him a working console and he sent me back a broken one. But I wanna know what you guys would do. CE12530, it is the same serial number. I don't know what that noise was. Do I have this kind of power cable? I do, yes, he included it because I sent it with it. But let's plug this one in and see if this works. Where'd that cord go? Oh, it's the wrong kind of plug. Hold on, let me go over here and do it. All right, so on this one, it powered up and then it instantly went to a red flashing light. I'm not sure what that means, but I could look it up. Let me look it up. Okay, so this says that if it turns red, your PS3 is overheating. Uh, okay, so this is a project is what it is. It's um, basically saying I need to add more thermal paste to the, uh, to the device. So I don't know. It worked for a couple hours and then it just stopped. So I don't know. I'm just gonna say I don't know a bunch. That's gonna solve it. Yeah, anyways, let me know down below. Would you do a full refund? Would you do a restocking fee? I'm not sure if the buyer had anything to do with this. It's possible that they were very in a very hot environment when using it, or it's possible that it just had issues. I don't know. I'm gonna try to fix it again. Is it even worth it? Like I'm sitting here messing, you can do a restocking fee and it's like, Okay, cause so I could charge him a 10% restocking fee for something he probably had no control over. I mean, maybe he did, maybe he was in a very hot environment or something like that, but would he have known that would damage it? Was it already damaged and then once it heated up, it broke? They're, the only reason I'm even tempted to do a, a restocking fee is because I spent 30 bucks to ship it to him and it had free shipping. And then eBay charged me to ship it back to myself 30 bucks. And it's like, I feel like maybe we could split that, right? Like do a $30 restocking fee. It was no one's fault, I don't think. So I don't know, or maybe it was their fault. Who knows? It's frustrating. Anyways, we're gonna move on with our lives. And maybe one day when I'm feeling bored, which I'm always quite bored, 
I will actually take that apart and try to add more thermal paste. And maybe I'll do the restocking fee just to simply see what happens. Cause I feel like the customer is gonna get mad if I do it, but maybe I'll do it and we can see if the customer gets mad or if they're understanding, I don't know. It'll be an adventure either way. So let's pull some orders. We actually sold some stuff. It's kind of hard to get around in here today because look at this. This is all whatnot orders from last night's auction. Really fun auction. A lot of people came. We were selling stuff we love to sell, plush and action figures and DVDs. All the Dave staples were being sold. So we had a lot of fun, honestly. And yeah, Tina actually shipped pretty much all of it today while I was working. So that was actually really nice. Uh, I did ship, I probably shipped like 10 of them just now. And then she shipped the other like 35 orders. So it was mostly Tina doing the work today, not me. But now that work is over, my day job, I can actually do some work, like pull my eBay orders and get those shipped out. Uh, but yeah, I don't know about that. Ex Anyways, we're not gonna talk about that anymore. We're gonna stay positive uh, and pull some orders. We did sell some O-Snap phone grips. So let's grab those first. Uh, looks like three of them sold, so that's always good. One customer bought two and the other one bought one. I'll tell you, I was watching back this footage at the flea market from this weekend and I can't help but think I left a lot of good stuff on the table. Like I left it behind. I should have kept shopping. I don't know why I do that. I, do you have this issue too? Like, and I do it at yard sales. I do it at flea markets. I do it everywhere. I'm always like, even though I'm at a sale that's got good stuff, I'm in a rush to get to the next sale because it could have better stuff or better prices or better whatever and so it's like oh let me rush through this one leave as soon as possible go to the next one which a lot of times ends up being worse than the first one i was at just because i feel like i gotta cover more ground like as i watch back this flea market footage i'm like dang it if i just like kept shopping there for 20 30 minutes i probably could have made like an extra four or five hundred bucks but what can you do oh snap phone grips sold three of them two to one customer one to the other 32.99 a piece on those so We'll get those shipped out. And then over in Mook's treasure trove. Uh, okay, yeah, so let's get back to the whole name change situation. So as I said earlier today on the way to the post office, we're changing the name of the channel. Now, when I said this, I, you know, I know someone was trolling me. I know someone was intentionally screwing with me because, <laughs> what am I pulling? Hold on, brain fart, brain fart, bring it back in. Got it, found it. So I knew, I, I told people, I told Kevin and Carrie, and I, I told Tina, I said, I'm nervous about announcing me changing my channel name because the minute I announce it, someone's gonna steal the YouTube handle. A YouTube handle is like the URL, the website for someone's YouTube channel. So if you do youtube.com slash ncpicker, it would go to my channel. Well, if I'm changing my name, I would want the handle to change to youtube.com slash ADH Dave buys or ADH Dave sells because that was the plan name. Well, you know, I went on my YouTube channel, my NC Picker channel, and I announced that I'm going to do this change and I say what I'm going to change it to and all this other stuff. And of course, someone went in and grabbed all the names, all the handles, youtube.com slash ADH Dave buys, youtube.com slash ADH Dave sells, auctions, whatnot, literally even the cooking one. They took them all. They were available before I did that video and now none of them are available. So I'm sitting there like, oh great. So what am I going to do? And I was messaging Kevin and he said that someone put in the comments of my video that instead of ADH Dave buys and sells, I should do ADH Dave picks and flips. And so I went and checked those names were available. And so I grabbed those and just really fast in a whirlwind, it's now going to be ADH Dave picks and ADH Dave flips. So I think it's okay. I think it's like a pretty common naming convention in our space. And maybe it's even better than buys and sells. You guys tell me in the comments what you think. But yeah, I thought that was frustrating, but I knew someone would do it. It's not even necessarily like they do it out of hate, but just some people got a troll. They just got a troll. All right, so this is what's sold. This is some weights, actually. Heavy hands, not even sure. I think they go in some sort of a, uh, like they screw on to some sort of handheld weight. Anyways, they're, they're four, so maybe they're four pounds each. It's a, a set of four of them, and we sold that for 22 bucks plus shipping. I paid 15.80, and they are in New Jersey, so I think we should be okay with that. I think we should get it to them for a decent price. Yeah, it says 11.65 would be our shipping at four pounds. Those I got at a community sale just the other day, basically in the rain, but me and my wife muscled through it and found that all wet. <laughs> The box was with it, but we threw the box out because it was drenched. And I think I paid $3 for the set. It actually had said $2, but she only gave me change. Like it was $3. 
but I didn't complain because I was like, whatever. Uh, and we sold it for 22 in a couple days, so it's not bad. These sold, these are from Eureka's Castle. They're little hand puppets. You've got, oh, can I remember the names? Is this Magellan? And this, no, this is Eureka and this is Magellan, I think. Anyways, we sold the set for 15 bucks plus shipping. Most people were selling them individually for like eight bucks a piece. So I just decided to bundle them and do 15. Last night in my auction, I sold a lot of stuff that I had gotten at the flea market, kind of knowing that it was gonna be whatnot type items, like, you know, G.I. Joe Thermos, funny masks, that sort of stuff, like uh, Halloween masks. That sort of stuff that I know does well on whatnot, that's fun to sell, it's fun to buy. And we sold it all. I mean, some of it we didn't make much on, some of it we did. Uh, all in all, it was a, a successful auction, I'd say. You know, I tried to list my Xbox 360s, and I was reminded why I never even buy them anymore. Been three or been four? Where is this item? Been four because both of the Xbox 360s I have don't power on. And this, like I said, it's just a very good reminder of why I don't buy those anymore because they seem to always break. All right, this is what sold. This is a Xbox 360 wireless dongle, hence the thinking of Xbox 360. I remember some statistic that they had a 100% fail rate back in the beginning. I'm not sure if that was true, but I remember hearing it was like a 100% fail rate on Xbox 360s. So this sold for $14.99 plus shipping. It was with one of the consoles. I mean, I don't think I paid much for the console, so this probably covered the cost of goods, but it's probably not much of a profit. So that just kind of made me realize I don't want to buy Xbox 360s anymore. They're generally not worth the headache. But look, I did sell a bunch of stuff like that. Again, it's hard to tell because I've got boxes everywhere, but that bin that I had over here that was overflowing is empty. I've still got that bin that I didn't sell. I've got a bin over there. I still have at least one more auction full of like, uh, fun toys and stuff that I can sell. What am I picking? Grabbing something. Oh man, brain fart. Oh well, what is it? Oh, it's a mouse out of bin seven. Yeah, we sold the mouse out of bin seven right here. So this is kind of cool. This is a, uh, a lot of people made fun of my hair in that NC picker video. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so this is a little Corvette mouse, kind of cool. I'll show it to you, let me put down the camera. See that? It's like shaped like Corvette and then your buttons are there and there. And it's optical, it's wired, and it's not in perfect condition. Brand new, they were selling for like 30 to 35. I listed this for 19.99 since it was in average condition. And it did sell. And someone said, I think they left a note or something saying thanks for the great deal. So they were excited about the price. I listed a little bit of stuff on eBay today too. It was fast stuff, I just listed it. It was like, one, two, three, four. Well, I can show you. So it's these action figures here and it's Trigun, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, and Trigun. I had this, oh, and there's one more, this P.O.P. Portrait of Pirates figure up here. I was in an auction on whatnot. You know me, trying to source on whatnot and generally not being super successful. And this person was selling these for a lot of money, but they were in Canada, so no one was bidding. And I was looking up comps, you know, it's kind of hard to look up comps while you're on whatnot, but I was like looking up comps he kept running things, no one was buying them. And I like, I started looking them up and I was like, you know, honestly, I could probably make money from this. People aren't buying it because shipping is so expensive. So if I'm willing to just pay for that first item and ship it, then all the other stuff is gonna be cheaper because whatnot, the shipping gets cheaper as you go. And so I was like, all right, I'm gonna try it. So I waited for him to run something that I thought could be profitable and I started bidding. And I ended up buying the five figures and I spent a lot of money, a good amount of money, I think around $500, five figures, which is almost a hundred bucks a piece. But when I look at the comps for these things, I think. I think I'm gonna do well, maybe not on all of them, but if you do like just an average buy price of 100, well really, these ones probably weren't a good buy if that's your average buy price because it looks like they'll, they sell for like 140 a piece. These ones though, seem to be a lot more rare. And if it was 100 bucks for each of these, the black and the red, then those were the good buy because when I look, it seems like the red has sold comps for like four to $500 and this bluish black one has sold comps for like four to $500. Sometimes they sell cheaper, but only if they're uh, in Japan, right? Like someone's shipping from Japan, which means you have to deal with customs and shipping and all that. So, and then this one sells for like 180 this P.O.P. one. So altogether, the value, if they actually sold for what I think they might sell for, it would be maybe around 1,300 bucks. You know, spend 500, get 1,300. But I don't know, I could be comping them wrong. Maybe some of you who collect those style of figures could uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm sure you will if I'm wrong. <laughs> but you know, it's kind of cool. Really, I just need to sell one of those big ones, the red or the blue one, and that would pay for the rest, almost. I'd almost be broken even just if I sell one of those. Actually, I think I listed the red one at 539 because I think I listed them both high with best offer turned on because there wasn't a lot available in the US. Like if you want to buy it, you have to buy it from Japan, which means, you know, slow shipping, expensive shipping, customs, all that stuff. So I figured I could charge a premium. So I went like a bit higher than the Japan available ones because it's located in, in uh, Florida. Hoping that someone who wants it quick 
without a hassle will come pay me 550 instead of paying someone in Japan 480. So like I said, if I just sell one of those, it would pay for everything. It could be a total fail, total gamble, but it seemed like that was what I could get for them when I was buying them. So I thought I could make a profit and I guess it'll be a learning experience if nothing else, but I think it'll go okay, I hope. Yeah, we'll see, you know, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see if it goes okay. So with seven items that we sold, well, seven orders, not seven items, with a grand total of $350, which average selling price of $50 per order today. Uh, obviously, something's bringing up that average with this being 15 and the O snaps being 30. That was 20. What did I ship that was expensive? Did I ship something expensive? Or did I sell something expensive? Am I doing the math wrong? Maybe I'm doing the math wrong. $14.99? Yeah, oh, you know what it is? It's not really 350. It's six items. So what I'm doing, so the average was probably 25 bucks or something. So what I'm doing is I'm still adding in that VCR, which I have not shipped yet from our last video. I have to ship it by tomorrow. I had some time and I had boxes coming in the mail and I think they got here today that are like VCR size. So I'm gonna grab a VCR size box and pack that up tonight. So it's still sitting there and it was like a $113 item. That's what was skewing my, my average, but still pretty good overall. Now I will say this, my mom called me. She's like, Dave, I can't find your channel. I searched ADHD Dave and ADH Dave and I can't find, I was like, ma, just for now, just search NC Picker still gonna come up, NC Flipper, still gonna come up. The way YouTube is, it like has a huge lag. So like if you go type in NC Picker Shorts, it'll pull up my whatnot auction page, even though I renamed it a month and a half ago. So you don't need to stress about not finding me, just make sure you subscribe, you know, so you don't lose me. But all in all, it should be good. I will probably change the channel uh, logo and name on here tomorrow sometime, which is today for you. And I will probably have already changed all my picker stuff by the time this goes live. So new day, new Dave. I hope it works out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you come back and see us next time. Bye-bye.